Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have yet another very interesting case. This is of a patient who attended with an ear infection in this, their left ear. Um, in their right ear, they had occluding uh, soft earwax and dead skin. Just to give you a, a backstory, uh, their case history, they previously visited a high street chain to undergo microsuction and after a, a couple of attempts they were unsuccessful and they developed this uh, an infection in their left ear it's unknown whether the procedure itself um, led to this infection or because the patient had been using earwax drops for quite a while and i, I suspect it's the latter and i'll explain why and how excessive use of earwax drops can lead to an ear infection. They visited their GP who prescribed some topical antibiotic spray and they were advised to visit myself to have this um, really thick, prolent discharge uh, from their left ear removed because that will give their, um, the, the, a chance for those topical antibiotic sprays to really penetrate the surface of the skin and try and eradicate this bacterial ear infection that they've got. Um, they had been um, placing a piece of cotton wool in their ear and the other day they realized the cotton wool went missing and they didn't know where it went. Because their ear is already blocked, they didn't suspect that the cotton wool was lodged in their ear and they were uh, aghast when they attended and they realized the cotton wool got stuck in their ear. So as you can see, I'm just performing microsuction to remove all this very thick, creamy, prolent discharge. And so the reason as to why I believe the infection developed secondary to um, using earwax drops, because when you use certain um, earwax drops in particular, and they're more the water-based alkaline drops, so your hydrogen peroxide or your sodium bicarbonate, if you use it for an excessive period of time, two things can happen. These are water-based drops. So water, for, if you have prolonged expo exposure to water in the air, they, the water macerates the skin. So basically it softens it and breaks it. And this skin that lines the ear canal plays a very pivotal, important role in our overall ear health. It's, it's, a, it's a protective barrier against harmful bacteria and, and fungi to penetrate the deeper layers of skin and causing ear infection. So once the skin's been macerated and broken down through prolonged um, exposure to water, which can happen through the use of drops, the ear becomes uh, exposed and the bacteria and fungi can invade the deeper layers of the skin and then lead to an infection and it can let off all this permanent discharge. In addition, uh, water-based drops are alkaline uh, in pH, so through using them, it elevates, it increases the pH level of the ear. Now, the ear is actually slightly acidic, and the acidic nature of the ear helps to uh, uh, inhibit certain bacterial and fungal growth. So, um, it's possible if you use drops uh, excessively that it can lead to an infection. It can also lead to some irritation because it's alkaline based. So, as you can see, I'm just using a fine end suction probe now just to delicately remove some of this debris from the back part of the ear canal. You can see there's a big hair strand here and um, I do manage to remove this, I think. Um, so there is some debris, some dead skin on the eardrum as well. And that, again, it could be macerated skin. So we just want to remove this. We want the drops to come in contact with the surface of the, the eardrum as well. Um, so the outer layer of the eardrum the more lateral layer towards us. It's actually made up of the same skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal, the bony part. So it's a layer of epidermis skin, epithelial skin cells. The middle layer is the a fibrous um, tissue layer. That's what gives the eardrum its rigidity, its strength. And then the inner membrane of the eardrum, because the eardrum is three, three layers. The inner membrane is a mucosa layer that lines the middle ear also. So the mucosa, you can think about it similar to the skin that lined um, the inside of our nose so it's a, a secretory type of skin um, so i'm just delicately removing this from the eardrum patient's ear canal is slightly narrow because of the infection there's a bit of inflammation there so i'm just kissing the surface of this eardrum you know, the majority of it is visible you can see it's just coming away 
So if ever you, you do use a bit of cotton wool in your ear uh, to prevent water from entering or also, uh, for example, if you're trimming your ear hairs uh, to prevent the hairs, you can see these hairs have probably gone into the ear because they've flown in. So if you're trimming your ear hairs, they do um, give rise for them to fly into the ear loose and that can mat against the, the wax or dead skin. It's very hard then to remove the debris from the ear. Um, make sure the cotton wool is quite a substantial piece so, and you don't really need to push it in your ear. It's just, you want to just position it at the entrance, almost tap it at the entrance so it creates an acoustic seal and a watertight air seal. You can apply some Vaseline around the edge. If you end up pushing it in the ear, you always run the risk of pushing it in too far and then you can't retrieve it. So most of the eardrum's visible just anteriorly. There is probably a bit of granulation tissue there um, and it's a bit damp still. So in a moment, um, you can see the suction probe, it's angled away um, towards the right hand side of the eardrum. And in a moment, I'm going to rotate that angle towards the left hand side of the ear canal. And you can see this ear canal is really uh, red, it's, uh, it's inflamed, it's tender. So I'm just stretching the ear open using the endoscope. This is probably the most difficult region of the ear to access, especially in, if you're right handed like I am and you're performing the procedure in someone's left ear, it's much more difficult. It's much easier to do this if you're right-handed in the patient's right ear to, to gain access into the anterior recess. So we're having to turn the suction probe the opposite way, and you can see I managed to actually get into that little alcove, what we call the anterior recess. Now, this is going to give the patient the best opportunity now to ensure these topical antibiotic eardrops uh, penetrate the surface of the skin, uh, prohibit any further growth and development of the bacteria. And there were, I've discussed very strict water precautions with them. So that's the eardrum, it's fully visible now. It's a bit dull, a bit of granulation tissue. So granulation tissue is a tissue that our body uh, develops and um, secretes and produces uh, in response to uh, an infection. So it's part of the healing process. And it's made up of connective tissue and this connective tissue then has its own blood supply and granulation tissue can look a bit bumpy and red and moist on the surface and there was some on that eardrum on the uh, anterior aspect so uh, we've asked the patient to obviously continue using their antibiotic drops and then to visit the doctor post um, the administered course just in case they need further treatment so this is their patient's right ear uh, i did actually start off with this ear um, and then I progress to the left ear. So whenever I know a patient's got an infection in an ear, so quite often they, the, the patient's aware and they tell you, I always start off with a non-infected ear because uh, it just saves us from um, having to sterilise the, the endoscope or because they decontaminate the endoscope. Um, if, if I started off with the, the left ear, the infected ear would have to decontaminate before entering the stair right ear. So we start off with a non-infected ear and then we can progress to the infected ear. So again, they, they've, they've had this attempted to remove on, on a couple of occasions and uh, they were advised that it's too deep in the ear. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. So um, I'm not sure um, what quite happened, but in response, again, the patient has been using a lot of drops and more immediately towards the eardrum, you can see that it's become quite mushy and the skin again and the wax, it's become macerated. Remember, earwax is made up of 60% dead skin on average. So excessive use of drops not only can affect the ear canal, uh, the surface of the ear canal, but it can also affect earwax. It can uh, macerate it, soften it. And in fact, that's why the drops are used. Uh, but this is just excessive. It's so much, almost bleached the wax. It's discolored. There's a lot of skin here. Now, you can see that the skin surrounding the ear canal, it's... Um, it's irritated, you can see the dry skin flakes. That's not fungal spores, uh, they can be mistaken. Fungal spores are very spherical. These are, these are uh, just dead skin cells, because the skin's become irritated. And I can just about see the eardrum in the distance, but we've got all this thick, creamy uh, debris that I'm gonna now remove off the eardrum. In the last uh, four weeks or six weeks even, we're seeing a massive up uptick in the number of ear infections that come to the clinic. In fact, I think I'm doing more ear infections and earwax removals at the moment. So I've got loads of ear infections. I'm not sure how the view is, um, if you're watching this, uh, okay, this, you could argue it's earwax, because uh, a lot of it was. Um, 
I, I don't know what if if people enjoy watching ear wax removal. Um, sorry, ear infection videos. I, I know some people do, but it'd be interesting to see. And I'm just using the fine end here again. I'm just going to get this off the floor of the eardrum. So this is called the inferior recess. As we approach the eardrum, the ear canal narrows, and we call a narrowing uh, an isthmus. And you can probably just see right to the suction probe where the ear canal narrows and it widens again. So the ear canal comes right to left and then it goes left to right again. And similarly, um, as we approach the eardrum, the ear canal at the base where I am now, it goes upwards and then it goes downwards. And that narrowing and widening of the ear canal creates two recesses, one called the inferior recess. So that's a trench basin at the floor of the eardrum and also an alcove to the right-hand side of the eardrum. In the case of the right ear, in the left ear, it will be on the left-hand side. So I'm just delicately going onto the eardrum here. You can see the eardrum, the blue tinge appearing. I'm just almost caressing that skin. We don't want to uh, apply pressure on the eardrum. We just want to caress it at the surface. So again, we're not going to get every little last speck of debris out here. Now the GP is not advised to use the medication this year. I've suggested that they just use some acetic acid. I think that would be okay. Uh, but again, any problems to visit their GP. So acetic acid, it just helps to reacidify the ear. Um, to the all, use of all the drops, it's very likely that this ear has become alkaline in pH or, or higher uh, pH. It's still alkaline, but not as low a pH, not as acidic as it should be. So we have to be really gentle. We can see it's starting to peel away from the drum. Now, I, I also do suspect these hairs, um, they have been pushed in. I, I, I commented earlier that it may be the patient trimming their ears, which, which they did say that they're doing, but they just look compressed. And these hairs are quite, the eardrum is quite sticky, the surface, and so are the hairs with all this debris. So they are stuck. It can make it a bit more difficult to remove. It's very hard to remove these hairs. It's difficult to get forceps that deep in and that narrow. When they're sticky like that, they don't always vacuum. So you can see that that strand came away. So I'm just going to continue just to see how much more I can get. Uh, the patient's daughter who attended was fascinated. Uh, so the way my um, clinic room is set up, um, if I'm performing the procedure in the right, patient's right ear, uh, the patient's significant other, so a friend or loved one, family member, they can actually watch because they're looking over my shoulder. I, in the left ear, it's the room set up it's somewhat so that it's more difficult, um, but the patient's daughter wanted to watch the left side, so they came around. Um, it's a bit cramped for space, but they did manage. So a lot of patients uh, 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 on their family members do enjoy watching. I've always toyed with possibly putting it on a big screen, but I've decided against that. The reason being is I can imagine patients, um, especially if you've got your eardrum very deep in the ear and you're approaching the eardrum, they might get a bit anxious watching it themselves on screen and as such uh, may make sudden head movements. So for patient safety, I've decided against that. So obviously we show the videos back to the patient so they can watch it afterwards. So got quite a lot of debris out. I think I'm just going to try and get a bit more, but already at this stage, I'm really, really happy. The reason why it's not possible to get all this little bits out because of the consistency. Also, if I try too much and too hard, I've run the risk of grazing the, the skin underneath. And by doing that, uh, we make it susceptible for infections, uh, bacteria and fungi can enter uh, where I've uh, caused trauma to the canal wall and then invade the deeper layers of the skin. So we don't want that. Uh, some people sometimes uh, may ask why we don't use water to rinse this out. Water is, for me, it's a big no-no. And if you've been watching my channel and listen to the audio, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of water in the ear. So again, what water will do, it can always lead to an ear infection because it increases the pH. Um, it provides a a perfect breeding ground for bacteria and fungi. So think about the ear being dark, warm, and then moist. It's the perfect incubator for bacteria, so we don't want that. Um, water can also wash away some of the uh, the natural oils in the ear, which are a form of protective, uh, protective barrier. So again, it's just, with water for me, it's just 
always run the risk of thereafter uh, developing a new infection, which we don't want. There's just a bit more debris that I'm going to try and get, I think, anteriorly here. I'm, uh, I'm literally placing the sucker on the eardrum, so I can't apply any more pressure. If it comes away, brilliant. If not, there's not really much more we can do, um, but it's very clear as it is. And the patient will use some ear calm in here, so some acetic acid, but the eardrums otherwise are fully visible. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, speak soon. Bye.